Oh, do we have more? Jussie Smollett would have been convicted if gone to trial. And that's according to Kim Fox. This is a strange and twisted tale. Why dispose of this in an alternative manner if you could have convicted him and gotten whatever punishment you want? Why just let it go? Now, here's the thing. They claim it's because it just made more sense. Essentially, he pled guilty, but now he's walking around saying he's innocent. Rahm Emanuel, the mayor's pissed, saying that he's, he's showing no remorse for what he's done. The, the, even Kim Fox, she's going to get in trouble, all right? Because there's more to this story, as you've probably learned, because the title is going to be about this bigger story. FBI reviewing circumstances of Jussie Smollett's charges being dropped, sources confirmed. And now, why would Kim Fox say something like this? I'm going to have to go ahead and bet it's because she's going to get in deep, deep, I'm not going to swear, trouble. I'll tell you why. In this story, we have what appears to be a leaked email, which uh, I believe is from Kim Fox. Her office uh, sent an email, a memo that raised questions. Okay, so let's read the story. and We'll get to that memo. <clears throat> the FBI is reviewing the circumstances surrounding the dismissal of criminal charges against Empire actor, uh, actor Jesse Smollett. Two law enforcement officials confirmed. All 16 felony disorderly conduct counts against Smollett for allegedly lying to police were dropped Tuesday in exchange for community service and forfeiture of his $10,000 bond payment. A hearing Wednesday to expunge his criminal record has been delayed. Ooh, does it get interesting? The ABC7i team has obtained the CPD investigative file for the Justice Millette case. Click below to read the files. Check this out. I believe this came out first from CWB Chicago, Crime Watch, uh, uh, Crime in Wrigleyville in Boys Town, Chicago. This gets good. It, trust me. CPD released those records in response to a Freedom of Information Act request Wednesday morning, not realizing, wink, wink, that the records were part of a judge's order from Tuesday to seal all criminal records related to the case. According to CPD spokesman Anthony Guglielmi, once the department was made aware that the records were part of the judge's order to seal, they stopped the release of any other documents. Let's, uh, let me read this quote he said. Earlier today, CPD began responding to document requests in reference to the closed case of Mr. Smollett. We were then advised of a court order prohibiting such release, and this afternoon, we received the formal directive, which stipulates that no further records can be released. Well, we still had a memo get leaked outside of this, but let me tell you, let me tell you something. So there's something called a FOIA. It's, 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 uh, the, it's an acronym for Freedom of Information Act, F-O-I-A. Journalists send them to government officials, hoping that documents will get released. P- possibly one of the most famous journalists right now for foying the government is Jason Leopold, who I think is at BuzzFeed, who's at Vice around the same time I was there. We learn a lot of very important things for FOIA, FOIA uh, requests. However, they take years. They can take forever. And in most circumstances, the government gives you the middle finger. They say, we're not going to give the documents. Now, they're forced to, the Freedom of Information Act. So what happens is you'll get heavily redacted documents eventually. Well, let me tell you what. When I heard that the Chicago Police Department, within less than 24 hours, released all of the criminal, the entire investigative file on Smollett in response to a Freedom of Information uh, Act request, I started laughing. Please. No, 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 no. That is, that is just, you, okay, you see what they're trying to do here. The police look really bad because of what's going on. They did all this hard work. In my opinion, Sure, there was a FOIA act. There was a FOIA request. This sounds more like a leak. But what makes it truly funny? They just didn't realize that these were part of sealed records. Oops. Yeah, there you go. So whether you want to be happy or mad about that, I don't know. It happened. Uh, No one's accusing the police of anything. That's just my opinion. I think the police wanted to get this information out so we could know that, you know, put some pressure on these, in my opinion, corrupt state officials who are letting Jesse Smollett get away with 16 felonies. But it gets, it gets crazier. A spokesperson for the FBI in Chicago declined to comment. On Wednesday, Cook County State's attorney Kim Fox defended her office's decision to drop all charges against Smollett, who, who was accused of staging a racist attack on himself. I believe this is a just outcome based on the circumstances. 
Fox said that the practice of dropping charges in exchange for community service and restitution is not uncommon for the class four felonies that he was charged with. That's a lie. So one of the other things that's been released, I think this also came from crime, uh, crime and Wrigley, uh, CWB Chicago, was a, uh, a list of comparable offenses. And a lot of people got like two years probation, convicted of a felony. Like felony is serious stuff, man. You can't travel anymore. I think the thing here is they realized that I, I think if you're a felon, you have a really hard time getting into a foreign country. I, I think that's true. You're like, you're not going to be able to, I, 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 you might not be able to travel at all because there's like a the, the treaty saying like no felons. So this would have been the end of his life. No more international work, period. And he's a, he's a celebrity. So, I mean, he's already done, but at least now he can go to, you know, Vienna and chill with a drink or whatever. But here's where it gets interesting. The cover up. Even as Fox said Smollett received no special treatment, officials in her office were circulating a memo that raised fresh questions. What did she say? The email confirmed by the I-team asked Cook County prosecutors for examples of cases like where charges were dropped under circumstances similar to Smollett's. They wanted to make sure that they had plausible deniability, that they said, oh, but look at these cases. Here's the memo. Hello, everyone. We are looking for examples of cases, felony preferable, where we, in exercising our discretion, have entered into verbal agreements with defense attorneys to dismiss charges against an offender if certain conditions were met such as the payment of restitution completion, uh, restitution, completion of community service, completion of class, class, etc. But the defendant was not placed in a formal diversion program. Please ask your ASAs, assistant, assistant state's attorneys, if they have examples of these types of dispositions, and we will work with them to figure out on what case it was done. Nobody is in trouble. We are just looking for further examples of how we, as prosecutors, use our discretion in a way that restores the victim but causes minimal harm to the defendant in the long term. In other words, they knew they wanted to get Jesse Smollett off for 16 felonies, but they couldn't just do it. They needed to look for some examples to where they could say, look, it's not unusual, like she's saying. What did she say? It's not uncommon that we do this. Yes, you only found out it wasn't uncommon because you actually had to have your staff go and look for it. In other words, it is uncommon extremely uncommon. Uncommon to the point where they couldn't think of any cases off the top of their heads. You know, something was common, not uncommon. Oh, you know, you know what? Maybe, maybe what she's saying, it's, it's not uncommon. Okay. Is it rare? Because <laughs> then maybe that's what she's trying to say and we're taking it the wrong way. No, we know what she's trying to say. The point is, in your line of work, if you can't think of an instance where you've done this, yeah, you're full of it. The email confirmed by the I-team, we read that nobody is in trouble, we are just looking for further examples. Fox also echoed the office's sentiment that, de- that the decision to drop the charges against Smollett is not an exoneration. We believe that the facts were sufficient to charge and try Mr. Smollett for the crimes, Fox said. While a court did not find him guilty, uh, she said, based on the facts and the evidence that was presented in the charging decision that was made by this office, the office believed that they could prove him guilty. So they said he's not innocent. They're, they're, they're saying they could prove him guilty. Works for me. But I think ultimately the reason they decided to let him go is because he's rich. Welcome to American justice. Fox had recused herself from the case a week prior to Smollett being charged when it appeared that the actor had gone from victim to suspect. She recused herself after speaking with a relative of Smollett, but not Smollett himself. Fox said it is not uncommon for her to speak to victims and their families. Um, Smollett isn't, isn't a victim. Isn't that strange? Smollett is the perpetrator, okay? He's, he's the perpetrator. He's the offender. He's listed in the documents as the offender, not the victim. What, what, is, what? The family had reached out, I think, to me, largely because they didn't have the connection to the police department, asking if there was a way to make sure that the leaks in the case were to a minimum. I don't want any speculation or concern. I don't even want the appearance that my involvement with this case, now having talked to a family member, would in any way impede this investigation. She was connected to the family through Tina Chen, the former chief of staff for Michelle Obama. Mm, yeah, I wonder how that works. So we got there's, there's, a, there's a lot more, but let's go down to the, the bottom. Smalls attorney Tina Glandian was also on GMA and responded to the criticism from Mayor Emanuel and Eddie Johnson, the superintendent. I think if they believe the charges, they never would have dismissed the case, Glandian said. It's such a high profile matter. Everyone has been talking about it. These are scumbags, pure scum. 
Obviously, it's made national headlines. They could have proceeded in a variety of ways. We were ready to move forward. We appeared in court. We pled not guilty. We were ready to fight the charges. And they're the ones who voluntarily discontinued the matter. So I think that speaks volume. Yes, because they are slime, slimy, disgusting, corrupt individuals. This man, in my opinion, is an evil, evil human being. Why did he do it? Well, we can only speculate based on what the police have claimed. And I think it's fair to point out that there could be motivations. We don't know about political motivations, perhaps, but at least according to the police, and I believe the mayor, he did this for personal gain. He wanted more money. Mm. He's already a wealthy and famous person, but he needed more. He wanted more. He was going to do whatever it took to get it. And that meant cheating the system, smearing the names of innocent people. And he was even willing to testify, at least according to the police, he went down to identify the perpetrators. He was willing to testify against innocent people if it meant he could get what he wanted. And you know why I'm willing, I'm comfortable to say all this? Because if even now Kim Fox is saying they can prove him guilty, the other state's attorney is saying he's not innocent, the mayor saying he did it, the police saying he did it, we have the two brothers on video, they testified before grand jury. Come on, we're beyond a reasonable doubt, at least as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I will state, sure, he deserved his day in court, but we can see how the corruption works in this country, that if you are rich and famous, you can do whatever the fuck you want. This man is an evil piece of human trash. And I, I, I will be, you know what? I swear to God, if they bring him back on Empire, it's not like I watch the show anyway, but this man is, is garbage, pure garbage. The, the nerve of him to go up and say he's innocent after all of this and everything he's done, after everyone, even the people who got him off, Kim Fox is saying we can prove that he was guilty. He's not innocent. Mind blowing. Wow. Look at all the previous coverage. Wow. Fantastic. A federal probe by the FBI and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service into, into whether Smollett played a role in spend, sending a threatening letter to himself prior to the allegedly staged attack remains open. Despite Tuesday's developments, a law enforcement uh, official told ABC News. So let's wrap up with some important things. The federal investigation is ongoing. The FBI is now getting involved in the charges being dismissed, according to a law enforcement source. And uh, we had one more thing. What else do we have? Uh, well, we'll leave it there, I guess. So there, there you have it. The FBI is looking into it. The federal investigation is still open and they are saying he's not innocent. So Donald Trump tweeted about this. Uh, I think he tweeted about this. I don't have it pulled up, but I, I think we're going to see something. I do not think he'll get away with this. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. Now that the Russia Gate investigation is dead, no collusion, you could see this look on Trump's face. I feel like the gloves are off. He's cleared, and now he's got free reign to stop pulling punches and go after all these people. We'll see what happens. I got another video coming for you at 1 p.m. on this channel. I will see you then.